Hello, my name is Ilian St. Hilaire. I've been working on a project on peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking and I've open sourced on the uh, website the first uh, prototypes of it and I want to explain uh, how it works. Now I'm going to make a couple of videos of different aspects of how the peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking uh, works. But today I want to focus on how I actually mesh all the uh, agents together. Now, Basically, what is being built is a little, by, little bit like a, a bacteria or a little living thing. Um, and so what you do is you have this, uh, this spider kind of thing. So can you imagine each computer kind of being like a, a multi-legged spider? And in fact, the implementation that I have now, the spider would have exactly 12 legs. So at most, it could basically touch 20 other uh, nodes on the network. And so what happens is that when you have a, a single one of these nodes, it broadcasts, finds another one, and hooks up to it. And then so on and so forth. Uh, it hooks up to another one, and then they hook up to other ones, and so on. And you, inc you basically build this uh, mesh of a whole bunch of different nodes that are connected together. Now, what happens is that when you, when you add a new node, uh, at that point, the, the mesh is unstable. This node finds you know, one of the other nodes that are existing in this mesh uh, using a normal broadcast mechanism. And then once it does that, it can find all its peers, all the peers of this other nodes, and it can start walking through the mesh. So imagine this is a web, you know, basically of computers that are all connected together. And this new guy will basically start walking through and find the proper spot for himself inside the existing web and just park himself uh, right there. And the, the way that this is done is that you start by putting one leg on one of your, uh, on the existing nodes, and then you, you, basically, um, you basically find other nodes put other legs on that, those nodes and so on until you have 20 legs all used. At that point, you may start disconnecting some of your legs to walk basically forward uh, to other nodes that are uh, more advantageous. So now, how can I tell which node is more advantageous? Well, the system we use is that we have an identifier in each of the nodes. So each node has an identifier. And uh, for, uh, as we'll see in other lectures, this identifier is actually the hash of the public key of the s uh, certificate of that node. So that's, that's, the, that's how we derive that number. And it has special properties to it. But for now, let's just assume that each node has a, uh, an identifier. Now, what we're going to do is basically have a small formula to calculate the distance between two numbers. And what you can do is subtract them. We use an XOR formula, basically, to, to calculate the distance between two nodes. Now, this is not a true distance. This is not the distance, the physical distance in between these two, or, or the, 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 even the trip time on a network between the two nodes. It's a completely arbitrary distance between two uh, nodes. But once you have these two numbers, and you know it, what your distance is to to other nodes that you uh, know, then what you can do is you can start making a little internal graph. So the new node will have a graph inside in, in the memory of which node it knows, which nodes it's con currently connected to, and what distance each of these, um, each of these connection is. So let's suppose I'm connected to three other nodes. Well, we can measure the distance of my node to these three other nodes. And we can tra basically draw a graph. And what will happen is that most of the nodes will be far away, and a few of the nodes will be closer by. Statistically, if you have a very large mesh with, with you know, thousands and thousands of nodes, then, um, then statistically, you'll, 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 um, you'll slowly um, you'll, you'll find a lot more nodes that are farther apart and just a few that are closer in. So now what you want thing you could do is basically say, I want to find the 20 closest nodes and connect to those. So you could do that. In fact, th that, would, that would basically 
lead you down a path where slowly you discover more peers as you connect to more nodes. And, and from those peers you connect to the ones that are smaller than the ones that exist. You drop the connections to the, the ones that are higher distances and you start walking basically um, across the mesh by going from the, you know, the higher uh, connections, you're walking towards the lower connections. Well, th that's good. But actually, a, a better, more practical approach is to actually find um, a certain number of connections that are far away, a certain number of connections that are mid-range, and a certain number of connections that are uh, closer in. So normally, you have this graph where you have a lot of nodes that are farther apart, and you have very little nodes that are closer in. But what we want to do is create, um, create a situation where it's pretty flat, where you, you have an equal number of nodes further apart than in inside your, um, inside your uh, you know, 20 that you could uh, get to connect to. Now, um, now, of course, because it's much harder to find nodes that are, that are closer to you, uh, you, you give a lot of privilege to trying to connect to those. And you will, you know, kind of strictly speaking, connect to always the, the, the ones that are very, very close to you. You'll always connect to those because th there's not many of those. But as you go further apart, further away from in, in distance, there's a lot more of these, um, of these nodes further away. And so uh, you get a choice to pick kind of randomly uh, from those a couple that, that you uh, want to connect to. So this is basically how we can scalably take a node and move it into the web. As nodes disappear and appear onto the mesh, well, this constantly rebalances. So every node tries to keep 20 connections. The 20 connections are pretty even distance across the, the mesh. And if a node drops out, well, now you have 19 connections. You can take a look at the people you're not connected to, the people, the, the nodes that are uh, one, uh, you know, that, that one of your peers knows about, and you can kind of pick the best one for, and connect to that one. The best, the best one that would suit your graph. And of course, at any point in time, if you're connected to 20 uh, nodes on the network and another node shows up that is even closer or that is even more advantageous for you to connect to, then what you'll do is you'll drop on your existing one to connect to that one. So you're constantly kind of, kind of moving around. Now, one could argue that if you have exactly 20 nodes in the mesh, um, I'm sorry, 21 nodes in the mesh, then each node is connected to 20 other nodes, right? So they're all fully connected, 21 nodes. They're each using their 20 legs, so to speak, uh, to, to connect to the other nodes. So what then, when you, what happens when you cr insert a new node onto a fully connected graph like that? Well, what happens is that for a portion of, um, of those nodes, it will be advantageous because of the distance to new nodes to drop some of their existing connections and connect to the new one. So this is why you can, you can never get stuck. It always kind of works pretty well. Well, anyway, this is a very beginning uh, lesson in how we do the mesh connectivity and scalability. Uh, it's nowhere near what's actually in the code. We use a lot of other algorithms, um, a lot from BitTorrent, a lot of, of stuff that's been talked about. Cord, for example, is, is a, a project that has been working on that. There's a lot of distributed hash table algorithms that, that deal with this. So um, we looked through, through literature, found one that's pretty easy to implement, and uh, this is what we use today. Thank you very much.